Nitrila, Prashta Om Vishnu Kumar, Ashtotar Satasri, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Prabhupada. It is a matter of great fortune for the whole world that from Vrindavan Dham, Srila Prabhupada, in his old age, to fulfill the order of his holy master, his Guru Bhairavadana, Prabhupada Bhaktisiddhanta he set off alone to go to America and from there throughout the whole world. Vaishnavas are very confidential personalities, very difficult to understand. So Vaishnava Chiniya narrated Deva, Deva Rashakati. Even the demigods don't have the power to recognize the greatness of the Vaishnavas. Before Sri Krishna appeared in this world, when Sri Krishna's expansion, Vasudeva Krishna, was in the womb of Devaki, in Sriman Bhagavatam it is described that all the devotees came in the sky and offered prayers. That, 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 is, that is the famous Deva Stuti in Srimad Bhagavatam. Deva Stuti. Satya Pratam Satya Param Satya. So the demigods knew that Krishna was appearing and they prayed him. But when a Vaishnava appears, they, they don't know. So Vaishnava Chinari Nari Deva Rashakati, the demigods, they don't know who is a Vaishnava. When Prahlad Maharaj was in the womb of his mother, the demigods did not come to pray, they came to kill him. So the Vaishnava Tattva and the great glories of the Vaishnava is very, very confidential. So David Kinanda is saying, Kemani Chinibo Mui Adama Pamati, then how can I, who am, I am very full, fallen, and my intelligence is very tiny. I don't have four heads like Lord Brahma, that I can manage the whole universe. I can hardly manage my suitcase. So how will I understand the position of the great Vaishnavas? Huh. Once some disciples of Srila Prabhupada asked him, what did we do in our previous life that in this life we have your association? What did we do that created our good fortune? Srila Prabhupada said, nothing. <laughs> I have created your good fortune. So this is the Siddhant conclusion of Srimad Bhagavatam. Yadrchaya matkatado jata sradas tu yapuman na nirvino nati sakto bhakti yogosya siddhi daha. See, Krishna has said that if by good fortune a person develops a sraddha, strong faith in Harikata, the powerful discussion, discussions of the pastimes of Sri Krishna, then that person be not to attached to the world and not too detached from the world also. For him, he can very easily attain Siddhi perfection. Bhakti Yoga, Siddhi Da, Bhakti Yoga will easily and quickly give that person perfection. Hmm? 
So in this verse it said, Yadrichaya. If, it, if someone becomes fortunate and develops the faith in Harikata, so what is that fortune? So, Yadricha Swairita Iti Amaraha In the Amar Kosh, Sanskrit dictionary that our Acharyas use, there the definition of Yadricha is given. Yadricha Swairita Iti Amaraha Swairita means free will. Free will. In other words, the pure Vaishnavas, by their free will, they are wandering across the surface of the earth, making everyone fortunate. Janasya Krishnadvi Mukasya Daivata Dharma Shilasa Sudukitasya Anugrahena Trantinunam Bhutani Bhapyani Janadanasya In Srimad Bhagavatam, there, Maitreya Rishi is saying, Oh, the great souls are always wandering across the surface of the land. Adharma Shilasya Sudukitasya because the living entities, they're again engaged in a dharma. They go against the principles of religion. And because of that, sudukitasya, they are very, very miserable, suffering so much. Hmm? So, Janasya Krishna Daiva. And the cause of their irreligion which is the cause of their suffering is that their hearts have turned away from the beautiful smiling face of Gopinath. This is the only cause of all problems. That our consciousness has become diverted away from Krishna to other things. Into dualities of the world, away from God. How can we souls in this world who have turned away from God be inspired to turn our faces once again to see Krishna? How is it possible? Only by the association of see Krishna's great associates. He is very near and dear devotees. So, Anugrayena Charantinunam for the purpose of giving mercy to the living beings and turning their hearts towards Sri Krishna. Charanti nunam bhutani bhavyani janardanasya. Those who are full of power, full of love for Krishna, are wandering over the surface of the earth. Charanti here is in the present tense. Present tense means that it is not some ancient time in the past when there were pure devotees in the world. They're always here. They're very rare. Some Mahatma Sundullabha. Very, very rare. But they are here in this one. So, Yadricha Swayita Iti Amaraha. By their free will, they're wondering. This is astonishing. Why? Because everyone else is wondering by the three gunas. Prakritei krigamanani gunae karamani sarvashaha aham karagamudatma kartaham itimanyate. I am wondering. No, no. Your false ego is telling that you are wondering. Aham karagamudatma kartaham. Hmm? But actually, Prakritei Kriyamanani, only the three gunas are controlling everyone in this world. But the pure devotee is the Triguna Artit, beyond Tamas, ignorance, beyond the Rajas, passion, beyond Sattva Guna. They are in the stage of 
Vishuddha Sattva, pure transcendental existence. Sattvam Vishuddham Vasudeva Shabdita. In the state of seeing Krishna at every moment, once one journalist said to see Krishna, to, sorry, to Srila Prabhupada, to see Krishna's representative. Oh, you are talking about Krishna, 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 but have you ever seen Krishna? Have you ever seen God? See, the Prabhupada said, first try to understand what is God. So then, that journalist, he was very persistent, he said, yes, I will try to understand what is God, but tell me, answer my question, have you seen him? Srila <laughs> Prabhupada said, if I tell you, will you believe my answer? <laughs> so then the journalist, he thought, he said, yes. Srila <laughs> Prabhupada said, I am seeing Sri Krishna at every moment. So Mahabhu said, Stavara Jangama Dekina Dekita Murti Sarvata Hoi Nija Ishta Deva Spurti. The pure devotees in this world, when they are looking at the various moving and non moving living entities here and there, but actually, what are they experiencing? They are experiencing this Purti, the vision of the Ishta Deva that very form of the Lord with, with whom they are deeply and intimately in love, with whom they are deeply and intimately related forever, with unbreakable bondage of affection. So, though the living entities in this world, they are not independent, they are controlled like puppets by three gunas. But the pure devotee is also in this world, but he is moving Swaira Charita by his own free will. Even Krishna is not moving by his own free will. See Krishna said, Aham Bhakta Paradhilo when Durvasa Muni came to Lord Narayan in Ramapriya Vaikuntha, because the chakra was chasing him, he said, please save me from the chakra. And the Supreme Lord said, no. She said, don't you have any mercy in your heart for me? He said, my heart does not live with me. My heart has been stolen by my devotee. So if you want my mercy, don't come to me. Go to my devotee. Amrish Maharaj. But what did you do? You tried to kill him. So I cannot save you from the chakra. So Vasarishi said, no, 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 you can save me from the chakra because you are the all-powerful supreme controller. Hmm? You are Sarveshwara, hmm? the controller of everyone. And Supreme Lord said, Aham Bhakta Pratino, I am controlled by the love of my devotees. So unless you surrender yourself and beg forgiveness from Amrish Maharaj, I cannot stop the chakra. The Rasarishi said, but what if I go to him and he doesn't forgive me, then the chakra will kill me. Lord Narayan said, you fool! The chakra could have killed you in one second. The only reason the chakra has not already killed you is because for this whole time, for one year, down on earth, Amrish Maharaj was praying for your auspiciousness. So even the Lord's chakra could not kill him because Amrish Maharaj was praying for him. Vaishnavera Abedana Krishna Dayamai Eheno Parmara Prati Habena Satoi 
when the Vaishnava prays for us, then Krishna's mercy comes to us. So the Vaishnavas are independent. The conditioned souls, they are not independent. They are controlled by the three gunas. The Supreme Lord is not independent, he is controlled by the brave of the devotee. But the devotee is independent. So Lord Brahma, when he prayed, in the Brahma Stuti to Krishna in Vrindavan. He said, Asya pi deva vapuso madanu grahasya swecha mayasya natu bhuta mayasya kopi neshe mayitu avasitam manasantarena sakshanta vaiva ki bhutatma sukhan bhute. What Brahma said? This form I am seeing before my eyes as a small five-year-old cowherd boy with a peacock feather in his hair, with earrings made of gunja berries. Yeah? And not decorated with silver and gold and jewels, decorated with feathers and berries he found in the forest. Children. Children don't see, oh, this is very expensive, they just act like it's amazing. <laughs> Whatever, anything. <laughs> Krishna is decorated with gunja berries, with a garland of forest flowers, with a bamboo flute stuck in his belt on this side, and a stick for herding the, the calves on the other side. And a bugle made of leaves. <laughs> and he's standing with the food in his left hand. Everyone knows you don't eat with your left hand. But this boy, he has yogurt and fruit and dripping through his fingers and some rice standing. Then Brahma said, and you were standing before, before me with very small soft lotus feet. So, Krishna, he did not speak to Brahma, but telepathically in his heart. He said, so I have a form like a little boy. Am I an ordinary little boy? Brahma said, Asya Deva Vapaso Madanu Gras. No, no, no. This form I am seeing before me that you are revealing to me by your mercy. Natubhuta Mayasakopi is not made of earth, water, fire, air and ether like the bodies of all the living entities and demigods. It's not made of any material element. And this form is such that Sakshatta I cannot understand the powers inherent within this divine form of yours. They're beyond the reach of my mind and intelligence. I cannot understand what happiness you feel coming from your own form, which is the condensed embodiment of Satchit Ananda. Eternity, knowledge and bliss. I cannot understand here Atmabhut means the happiness coming from yourself. But also the devotees of Krishna are also called his Atma. The devotees are my own. So he said, Brahmaji said, I cannot even understand the extent of the joy which is experienced by your coward boys whom I try to steal. So what to speak when you the Satchidan on the Bigra are playing beautiful pastimes in Goku with your loving associates whom I cannot understand. Then how much joy you feel when you are playing together. It is far beyond my capacity to understand. But what I know is this. Swalicha mayasya natubhuta mayasya kubi. That your Leela in this world is Swecha Maya. Swa means own. Icha means desire. So your activities are Swa Icha Maya. All coming from the desire of those who are your own. Hmm? 
your Nija Jana, your own associates. In other words, whatever Krishna is doing, he's doing it out of love for his devotees. You pick up any copy of Bhagavad Gita on the front cover, what's, what's happening there? Is Krishna relaxing with a cool drink while Arjun is driving his chariot? No. Krishna is driving the chariot. All of Krishna Lila is Anubhav. Anubhav means the reaction to the love in the heart. Because Krishna's heart is moved by the frame of his devotees, he reacts to that and his reaction is called Krishna Lila. So, the pure devotees like Srila Prabhupada, they are moving in this world by their own free will, not bound by karma. Just like if there's a, the web of a spider. If any insect will go in the spider's web, they become entangled. But the spider moves around freely. So in the same way, when we are in this world, we get entangled in many problematic situations. By our karma. But the pure devotee, always oh, like the spider, is moving freely, no problem. Eh? And it's always Mahatmanas to Mamparta Daivin Bhakritin Asita. He's under the control, he's under the shelter of Yoga Maya. Krishna's Leela Shakti. Even Krishna doesn't know what his Leela Shakti would do. Lila Veshi Prabhu Nahi Nijan Musandhan Icha Jani Lila Shakti Kai Samadhan In Sri Chaitanya Tanamrita an example is given how the Lila Shakti is managing the Supreme Lord's Lila but the Lord himself, he does not know what's happening. It's amazing. Otherwise if he will know everything then he cannot taste the rasa of the past. Huh? If I am playing chess with you, and I am omniscient, I know every move that you can make, then what fun is that for me? I could not even play a game with you because I know what move you'll make before you make it. So what is this? The excitement comes, the joy of the leader of the play, when I don't know what will happen. So it's the frame of Krishna's associates that covers him and bewilders him. And Yoga Maya manages the Leela. And therefore, it's relishable for Krishna. See, Krishna is a Rasika Shekhar. A relishable old Rasa. But unless you forget that he is Bhagavan, unless you forget that he is omniscient and all powerful due to the devotee's love for him, and unless he will give responsibility to managing the Leela to someone else, how can he relish Rasa? So the management responsibility goes to Purnamasi Bhagavati, Bhagavati Purnamasi Yoga Maya Dev. So I'm giving one example. I am not giving it. Sharing with you, Sri Krishna Skaraj Goswami is giving this example. In Chaitanya Chajarita. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was dancing in the Ratyatra festival, there were so many Kirtan groups all around, in front, on the sides and behind. And Maharaj, Prataparudra Maharaj was standing on the uh, balcony of his palace and he was looking. He was with Gopinath Acharya, with his guru Kashi Mishra, with Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. And Prataparudra Maharaj looked and he saw that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was dancing in each of the Kirtan parties. Guru Maharaj said to Sarvabhu Bhattacharya and Kashimishra, Kashimishra, look, look! Kashimishra is his guru. Diksha guru and Sarvabhu Bhattacharya is his Shiksha guru. He said, look, Mahaprabhu is dancing in all the Sankirtan parties. Hmm? His guru there said, because you are very fortunate. Because they were looking, they couldn't see. They only saw Mahaprabhu was dancing in one part. And all the Vaishnavas who were on the ground, they only thought Mahaprabhu was dancing in our Kirtan group, not in other Kirtan groups. But each group thought he's with us. 
And Kashi Mishran Sarva Bombati Chari could only see that he was in one. And Patamud Maharaj saw he was in all of them. And what did Mahaprabhu see? Nothing. <laughs> because he was absorbed in the mood of Radharani meeting with Krishna at Kurukshetra. It wasn't that Mahaprabhu thought, let me dance in all of these groups. This thought never crossed his mind. He never thought, let me show myself dancing in all of these groups to Pratapurudu Maharaj, but I'll hide it from Kashimishra. And Sarva Bhambhadacharya. He never thought anything. He thought, Ya Kaumara Hara Sahi Vai Varastai Vachai Trakshapas. Oh Krishna. I have come to Kurukshetra and I am meeting with you. I am the same Radharani and you are the same Krishna. And we are meeting just like we met when we were young in Vrindavan. And it's very joyful. But I want to go back to Vrindavan. I don't want to be here in Kurukshetra. Please come and be with me in the beautiful kunches on the bank of Jamuna. Where I can hear you playing upon your flute. The fifth note. This note. <laughs> Mahaprabhu was absorbed in that. He wasn't thinking, well, how do I manage this mercy? <laughs> this mercy to that person. That mercy. <laughs> but because Prataparudra Maharaj had taken a broom you know, in Vedic culture, everyone has a caste, and each caste has a different duty. So the very low caste, they're the bungies. And it's their duty to sweep the road with a broom. A king will not pick up a broom and sweep the road. But Prataparudra Maharaj took up a broom and swept in front of Lord Jagannath. Because everyone has to become humble before Lord Jagannath, Supreme Lord Krishna. When Mahaprabhu saw this, then his heart was trembling with anticipation. When will I, when can I shower Prataparudra Maharaj with my mercy? That was his desire. And not only that, but previously, Ramananda Rai had been working in the government of Prataparudra Maharaj. He was the governor in South India, governor of Madras area, staying in Coburn on the bank of Godavari River. There is Bhaktivedanta 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 Goswami's Mahatis there, in that place of Ramananda. So he was the governor of that area. But when Mahaprabhu said, Oh, please come and stay with me in Puri. You see, when Mahaprabhu came to Godavari, I was discussing with Ramanandra, Ramanandra begged him, Oh Mahaprabhu, please don't leave, stay here for a few more days. Mahaprabhu said, No. <laughs> Why a few more days? I want to have Harikatha with you for my whole life. <laughs> so when I return to Puri after touring in South India, please leave your job, your government service, and come and stay with me in Puri, and I will listen to your Harikatha for my whole life. And he did. Mahaprabhu yeah. stayed in the Gambira and every night Ram and Rai would come and sing. And he can tell Harikata, recite Srimad Bhagavatam in his own poetry, Sri Jagannath Balad Nataka. Uh, so, but you cannot just leave the government service. So Ramananda Rai requested Prataparudra Maharaj, I want to retire and I'll go to Puri and serve Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The king said, oh, you want to retire and leave your government service in my government to serve Mahaprabhu. Very good. I'll give you full salary as your pension for the rest of your life. <laughs> so when Ramananda Rai arrived in Jagannath Puri, Mahaprabhu said, how did you get out of your government service? He said, oh, the king is a great devotee. He told me at once go, serve Chaitanya Mahapu and I'll give you full salary for the rest of your life. Hearing how Prataparudra Maharaj was so 
uh, eager to serve Mahaprabhu's near devotee, like Ramananda. His heart was trembling. When can I give mercy to him? But a sannyasi does not meet with a king or wealthy person. Niskin chanasya bhagavan parjanum makasya param param jigamisho babasagarasya. For a sannyasi to meet with a king or a wealthy person, oh, that is worse than knowingly drinking poison, Mahaprabhu says. I cannot meet with the king. Mahaprabhu, outwardly, he said he didn't want to meet with him because he's establishing Maria, the proper behavior for Vaishnava sannyasis. But, but Guru Maharaj is not a king. Na Anvi Prona Chanarvati Na Anvi Vaishnava Sutra Na Anvi Na Jikriti Uno Vanastoya. Mahaprabhu has taught, I am not a Brahmachari Grihastavana Prasthavasana. I am not a, a Sutra, a Vaishya, a Katriya or a Brahmi. I am only Das among Das and Das, servant of the servant of the servant of Gopinath. Gopibhatu Padakamaya. Gopibhatu means Gopinath. Gopibhatu Padakamaya. Das, Das among Das. So, Mahaprabhu wanted to give mercy to him, but openly he could not. So, what happened? Mahaprabhu gave him darshan how he was dancing in all the Sankirtan parties, but not to others. So, there Krishna's Karaj Goswami has written that Leela Veshi Prabhu Nahini Janu Sandhan means be Leela Vesh, being absorbed in his own pastimes. Prabhu, Mahaprabhu, Nahi Nijanu Sandhan, never investigated himself what he was doing. And in this group or that group or all the groups, where am I? Well, he did not think about it. But, Icha Jani Leela Shakti, the Leela Shakti of Krishna, knowing the desire of Mahaprabhu, Kori Samadhan, reconciled everything. So, Krishna's Leela is like that. Krishna does not know what is going on. Leela Shakti is manifesting everything. And whatever he's doing is the reaction to the bars of his pure devotees. So such pure devotees like Srila Prabhupada, they are wandering this world and they are creating the good fortune of all the living entities. Well, Srila Prabhupada was a Grihastha. He was also preaching so much. Don't think he wasn't preaching, that he only began preaching when he was sannyasi. Throughout his life he was preaching. In 1941 he was the co-founder of Maya Gurudev's march. The Gaudiya Vedanta Samhiti was founded by Srila Bhakti Prakant Kesha Maharaj and Abhay Chanarabhim Das Prabhu. Abhay Chanar Prabhu. Bhakti Vedanta was the title he had in his Grihastha life. Bhakti Vedanta. Vaishnavas gave him that title of Bhakti Vedanta. Before Sanya. So because he was so learned. So in 1941 on Akshay Tritya in Bospat Lane, Calcutta, Srila Bhakti Pragyam Kesha Maharaj, who later became his sannyas guru, Bhakti Vedanta Avaita Naravinda Prabhu, together they were the co-founders of the Gaudiya Vedanta Samhita. And uh, my Param Guru Dev had a magazine, uh, the Gaudiya Pataka and Bhagavad Pataka, and Srila Prabhupada was the uh, editor also of that and wrote many articles in his household life. So at one point Srila Prabhupada went to Jhansi, and in Jansi, uh, he had a friend who had a very big building and that friend gave him that building and Srila Prabhupada made an organization there called the League of Devotees. There was a big wall outside and six foot letters high painted on the wall, the League of Devotees. And Srila Prabhupada established a very beautiful deity of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Like this. Just one Mahaprabhu like this. What does it mean? Sri Parambhuja Bhatsila Bhakti Rakshak Shri Dagaswami. 
He used to say that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the golden volcano of life. So when a volcano erupts, then from deep within the earth, the, the fire goes up into the sky. And then the lava, the molten rock is lava, runs down the side. And then that lava, when it cools, it's very nutritious to, for the earth. It makes the soil very nutritious, full of nutrients. So in the same way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is tasting, is Krishna tasting Radha path. And because his heart is exploding, feeling the brain, the love that Radharani feels for him, one hand is going up. And he's dancing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Rama. And one hand is down, that means the lava is coming from the volcano of love and nourishing everyone. That means that Mapu is giving Manjri Bhav. The mood of Rupa Manjri, Rati Manjri, Labanga Manjri, Rasa Manjri, Manjuri, Manjuri, Kasturi Manjuri. The main servants of Radharani, Mapu is nourishing the world with that mood. So, Srila Prabhupada established that very deed. But what happened? The man who owned that building, his wife, was very materialistic. And she came to him and was nagging him. Oh, we have this big building, we're not making any money from this. We should open some entertainment center. And all my female friends, all my lady friends, we can go there, we can play bingo. <laughs> And she nagged him and she forced him and he had to tell Shiro, I'm sorry, I have to use this building now, you cannot use it anymore for your legal devotees. So then Srila Prabhupada at that time, his business also failed. His marriage also and family, they rejected his wife, was addicted to tea. And because now he had no money, she wanted to drink tea. But Srila Prabhupada would not give her any money for tea. So when he was not looking, she took his set of Srimad Bhagavatams and sold them. And then Srila Prabhupada was very upset. He told his wife, tea or me? And his wife said, tea. <laughs> and in this way, Srila Prabhupada entered the Vana Prasna <laughs> So he let Srila Prabhupada left his family. But now he has no temple, but he has a deity of Mahaprabhu. So he came to Mathura to Kesha Ji It was established by my Parma Gurudev Srila Bhakti Pragyana Kesha Goswami Maharaj. And uh, though Srila Bhakti Pragyana Kesha Maharaj was staying in Navadvip, he had put his most intimate disciples, Srila Bhakti Danta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, my good in charge of the Mathura Temple. So Srila Prabhupada came and kept, there was no place for Mahabhu to go, so Mahabhu came there next to C.C. Radha Vinod Bihari. So now, since that time, if you go to Keshav Chigori Amat in Mathura, you can see C.C. Radha Vinod Bihari installed by Srila Bhakti Prakan Keshavaraj and next to them, Gauranga Mahabhu, Srila Prabhupada Mahabhu. So my Gurudev lived there in that much for more than 50 or 60 years, serving Srila Prabhupada's Chaitanya Mahabhu. And Srila Prabhupada took sannyas there in front of that deity of Mahabhu. Srila Prabhupada received the sannyas mantra that is Gopi Bhav mantra from my Param Gurudev. My Gurudev made Shila, went to the marketplace and bought big bamboo and cut it and made Srila Prabhupada's dhamma because he was already a sannyasi five years before Srila Prabhupada. Yeah. Made his dhamma and door coping by Uttariya and also Srila Narayan Goswami Maharaj did the five yagya for the sannyas ceremony of Srila Prabhupada. Then, after staying there for some time, 
Srila Prabhupada went to Radhadamadarati and was doing bhajan there, weeping at the lotus feet of Srila Rupa Goswami. Now, yesterday on Srila Prabhupada's birthday, one devotee, perhaps you know, do you know Satyaraj Prabhu? He's a very famous he wrote many, many books. You probably have some of his books on your shelf. His uh, legal name is Stephen Rosen. He's a research scholar and he's famous in it. He's called Satyaraj. Oh. So, right now he's writing um, an article about uh, Krishna Con the history of Krishna consciousness in New York. So he was researching and he found out that the deities in the New York temple are Radha Govinda. Uh, they were installed later, but before the big deities came, there were smaller deities, and people call them all. That's Prabhupada's Radha Krishna. So they were the first deities of Radha Krishna in New York. Radha Govinda, that is Srila Rupa Goswami's Ishtadev. And they called it Srila Prabhupada's Radha Krishna. So the very first deities of Radha and Krishna in the West, established by Srila Prabhupada, they have a very interesting history. Srila Prabhupada went first to Boston, after Boston he came to New York, and then after some time, his disciple Brahmananda, he, Srila Prabhupada sent him to go to the docks in New York because a ship had arrived. And he had to go and sign the papers and receive one crate, a wooden crate. And on the wooden crate it said, oh, if it's, this is not delivered to the address, then return to Keshav Ji Gaudiya Matamathura. And in that crate was Radha Govinda. So he just wrote to me yesterday on Prabhupada's birthday and said, do you know, did your Gurudev send, send these duties? As, yes, he told me many times uh, that he had uh, purchased these duties in Vrindavan and then went and arranged the shipping and sent them to New York. So this is a very beautiful lila that Sila Prabhupada bought Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Keshavji Gaudiya and then, from Sri Keshavji Gaudiya my Gurudev sent to Srila Prabhupada the first Radha Govinda, first Radha Krishna deity is established in the West by Srila Prabhupada. So, Srila Prabhupada wrote hundreds of letters, hundreds of letters to my Gurudev. Asking, please send deity, send Murdanga, send Karta, send my favorite sweet, Mathura Pera. There's a sweet only available in Mathura. The Chila Prabhupada liked very much. <laughs> and my Gurudev was sending it. And once, you perhaps you know Satsuru Maharaj, who wrote the book, the Prabhupada Lilamrita. When he was researching to write Prabhupada's biography, he came to my Guru David and said, Oh, can you tell me about your, what you knew of Srila Prabhupada when he was staying here? Do you have any letters? And my Guru David said, Yes, of course. And he took a big bundle, all the letters, and gave about 300 letters to Satsuru Maharaj. And he took them to America, to the farm, Gita Nagari. But unfortunately, somehow there was a fire at that farm and everything was burned, all the letters were burned. So there was no evidence of the loving relationship between my Gurudev, Srila Narayanaj and Srila Prabhupada. All, it was all burned. Maybe it was an accident, I don't know. Who knows? But, when I was living in Keshavji Gaudiya at the lotus feet of my Gurudev, one day, his room was there on the, right next to the temple room, close to the temple room. And the neighbor in the next building decided to build another story on his house. 
So he built another storage house and it blocked Gurdjieff. It was just inches away from his window. So now he had no more air and no more light in his room. There was one window, now covered with bricks. So then we decided, let's make another room for Silla Gurdjieff on the roof. So another room was built with him higher up on the other side of the building. So he, in case he went up another story. <laughs> Because on the other side there was a road, so no one could block it. <laughs> so when that room was ready, we had to move the furniture from Gurdjieff's lower room and carry it upstairs. So that time there was a one like uh, almari with different drawers and to move it because he said you have to take out the drawers one by one so when one of the drawers was removed then a little package had fallen down the back and had been there for 40 years no one knew and what was it a bundle of Srila Prabhupada's handwritten letters because when my Gurudev took all the letters and gave them to Satsuru Maharaj Krishna thought oh what will happen if they are lost? And Krishna pushed one bundle down the back of the drawer and it fell down there for 40 years. So I'm thinking that Krishna inspired the neighbor to make the extension on his house. So, <laughs> so we could find that bundle of letters. And it was just at the time when Srila Gurudev left India for the first time and began preaching in the West. And many people were saying, oh, who is he? He does not know Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada was not close to him. Srila Prabhupada said, don't listen to his godbrothers. Just when people were saying these things, then Krishna inspired the neighbor, build your house. And afterwards you will find I have hidden a bundle of letters there. So then, we, uh, Sila Gurudev uh, told the disciples to print, print the letters. And they were written in English. Srila Prabhupada was writing in English. So in one of the letters, Srila Prabhupada revealed something very beautiful. He said, The first time, now Srila Prabhupada is writing to Srila Raj. Dear, Sri Pad Bhakti Ranta Narayan Maharaj. Tandarat Pranam Sri Sri Guru Ganango Jayata. The first time I met my Gurudev Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Satarita The first time my Gurudev glanced upon me. In that very moment, I realized the meaning of love. I never knew before, but the first time my Gurudev looked at me, then I realized what is love. And in the same way, the first time I met you, I looked upon you in the same way as my Gurudev looked upon me. Because you know, Prabhupada is my Gurudev says Shikshu. And, and in the letter he wrote, our relationship is on the platform of spontaneous love. So spontaneous, that's Srila Prabhupada's English translation of Raga Nuga Bhakti. Spontaneous devotions. So you can see, we have printed it the, the, in print and also there's the photocopy of the letter also. In Srila Prabhupada's own hand. I looked upon you with the same love that my good ex saw. So our relation is eternal and on the platform of Raga Nuga Bhakti. When Srila Bhakti Pradhan Kesha Goswami, the sannyas guru of Srila Prabhupada, used to do Parakram of Navadvip. And he came to the Samadhi of his Guru, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Then, after Kirtan, all devotees would sit down and he wanted to glorify his Guru. And he would first begin, first I offer 
my obeisances to the Lila, Om, Vishnu Pada, And when he came to say Prabhupada, he could not say Prabhupada. He could only say Prabhu. <laughs> then he became gut gut. His voice was choked and tears were flowing from his eyes. He could not even say the name Prabhupada. Because he was feeling so much separation from Srila Bhaktisiddhan Sutta. So, in the same way, the first time when my Gurudev went in England to Bhaktivedanta Manor, that is, it was the house of George Harrison, that George Harrison gave to Srila Prabhupada. We went there, and uh, we went upstairs to the room where Srila Prabhupada used to write his books. And there's a desk and Prabhupada's deity is sitting there. That means Prabhupada himself. Huh? And in a, in a posture like this writing. So Srila Gurudev came in and gave Dandavat Pranam to Srila Prabhupada. And then sat down and we all sat down around him. And then now, my Gurudev doesn't call him Prabhupada. He calls him Swami Maharaj. Because that was the name given to him by his Sanyas Guru. But when my Gurudev said, first of all, I give my pranam to my Gurudev, and then I give pranam to my Shikshu Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Vedanta, and he could not say Swami Maharaj. His voice became choked and tears were streaming from his eyes. So this current of love is coming through our parampara. They are the associates of Radha Krishna, the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And they have not come for, to this world for anything. Only to distribute Krishna brain and a very special Krishna brain. Krishna brain which is predominated by love for Radharani, even more love for Radharani than for Krishna. So Guru is always with the disciples. Why did Srila Bhakti Pradhan Keshmaj become stunned and cannot speak? Why did my Guru become stunned and cannot speak? Because just as they began to speak, they experienced that Prabhupada came before them. They were having this purity, direct realization of the presence and in ecstasy they were going into internal samadhi and meeting and talking with them. It's not that they cannot speak, they're talking. But inside, but they've gone in samadhi, so outwardly we see he stopped. Don't think that when Mahaprabhu was fainting and becoming unconscious, he was actually unconscious. He was becoming more conscious. He was going into the Leela. So when our Acharyas are become stunned, they are going into the Leela. So Guru is always with the disciple. Just like... Gopal Guru Goswami. Gopal Guru Goswami. He became the Mahant of the Gambira, Radha Kantamat in Jagannath Puri. Mahaprabhu's place where Mahaprabhu stayed. And he was serving the deities there, Radha Kanta, Sisi Radha Radha Kanta, deities. And the Gopal Guru Goswami had a very dear disciple named Jnana Chandra Goswami. So, after some time, Gopal Guru Goswami passed away from this world, he went into the eternal pastimes of Radha and Krishna Mahaprabhu. But before he left, he told Dhyana Chandra Goswami, you will be the next Mahat on the Gadi here in Kashi Mishra You will be the next Acharya here and take care of everything. So he left and then Jana Chandra Goswami took over the service then. After some time, some government ministers came and said, Oh, this all belongs to the king. You are not in charge anymore. You have to leave. 
He said, but I am the Mahanti and my Gurudev has given me this responsibility. Do you have any document? No document. Always remember, put everything in writing. Get everyone to sign it. Take the photographs and video of them signing also. Just like Everything should be in writing. But he, it, it was only word of mouth contract. So he had no proof. So he was, he lost. He lost the gadi of the Gopal Guru Goswami there. He lost the service of his Gurudev's deities. He felt as if he'd lost everything. He was crying and crying. My whole life I have lost. Just then, some pilgrims came from Vrindavan to Puri. The pilgrims saw him crying. They said, why are you so upset? He said, because my Guru Dev Gopal Guru Goswami has left this world and I have lost my service, everything. He said, what? We just came from Vrindavan and we saw him there. He's doing bhajan. Dear Sameer. <laughs> <laughs> so then he went thousands, nearly 2,000 kilometers from Puri, on foot, walking, walking, from Puri, Janatan to Goswami. Where? Walking, walking, hundreds and hundreds of kilometers and came to Vrindavan and when he arrived on the bank of Jamuna, <laughs> So then it was all arranged and again he took up his service. But he never thought, I am in charge. Because that deity is still there today. Who has had darshan of that deity? Gopal Gurgasa. And you can see that to this day, when it's time to offer bow to Radha Radhakanta, then the Pujari is not doing the puja. He puts an asana there, he puts all the paraphernalia. And then he brings the it's about this big deity go and puts it in front of, on the asan in front of the deities and Gopal Guga. So he still today is doing all the puja. This is the tradition. So Guru is always with the disciple. Yesterday we were telling the history how when Srila Prabhupada was staying in Radha Damadar temple. One night, in the middle of the night, he was sleeping and he was woken up by a voice saying, Abhai Charanaravind, Abhai Charanaravind. 
So, who is calling my Grihastha name? I am Bhaktivedanta Swami now. Who is calling Baba tonight? So, in the middle of the night, he came out of his room and into the courtyard in front of the brother Dhamma. Of course, they were closed at night. And he looked, no one was there. And then again, he heard, Hey, Abhay Charnaravi. So he followed the voice, and when he came around the program mark to the Pushpa Samadhi of Prabhupada Bhakti Sutakur, then Prabhupada Bhakti Sutakur was standing there. He gave Dandavan Pranam. Prabhupada Bhakti Sutakur said, Hey, Abhay Charnarvind, I have given you this name, means Abhay, fearless Charnarvind at the lotus feet of Krishna. So now don't be afraid, now is the time. Go to the west. And then Srila Prabhupada disappeared. So Srila Bhakti stands with Thakur at the exact right time. He told Srila Prabhupada, now you are ready. You have been doing bhajan for about eight years at the feet of Rupa Goswami there in Ramadamadar in Seva And now he's blessing you. Go to preach in the west. So just like Gopal Guru Goswami appeared before his disciple, Jnana Chandra Goswami, even after he became aprakat, unmanifest from this world, he became manifest again to his dear disciple. In the same way, Prabhupada Bhakti Stanswa Thakur became manifest to Srila Prabhupada and then again. And instructed him. So Gurudev is always with the Sansisya. That disciple who is following. Many years later, perhaps you know, Srila Prabhupada's very near and dear intimate disciple, Yadurani. She's an artist. Many of the paintings in Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Chakrita, she has painted. You know her? Yeah? Yadurani. Many years later, There's some controversy over her name because Srila Prabhupada gave her name Yadurani, right? But now everyone is calling her Shamarani. So some unscrupulous persons made propaganda that Srila Narayan Maharaj is not respecting Srila Prabhupada because he reinitiated his disciple. Hmm? But this is not what happened. What actually happened? Perhaps the Shamarani will not tell it because she's very humble, but I will tell it. <laughs> One day, in the early 90s, Yadurani, she had been, now, before she was staying in Krishna Balaram and then now she was staying in Mathura with Srila Narayana. One night, in a dream, she saw her Gurudev Srila Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada said to Yadurani, go to Srila Narayan Raj and ask for a new name. So Yadurani woke up. <laughs> what is this? So then she went that day to Srila Narayan Raj and came to his Bhajan Kutiya. She came in and gave Pranam and she didn't say anything. Nothing. She just gave Pranam and the first thing Srila Narayana said is, I have a new name for you. <laughs> From today your name will be Shabarani. Because Yadurani means Rukmini Satibama and the queens of the world. <laughs> and Shamarani she used to live in, in Los Angeles. There is the Rukmini Dwokadish temple. Says, but now you should be come in the mood of Braja. <laughs> so you'll not be Yadurani, you will be Shamarani. Hmm? The queen of Shams or the Krishna. Hmm? The maid servant of Radharani. Shamarani is Radharani. <coughs> Krishna's queen. Not uh, officially queen, only queen of his heart. <laughs> Damadar Rati Vardana Veshi Harinishkuta Brinda Vipineshi. 
Brinda Vipina she means of oh, Radhika you are Brinda Vipina Isha you are the Rani you are the queen of the conscious of Brinda so you are Shama Rani Gurudev gave name Shama Rani Dasi so in this way I am giving some examples how Gurudev is always with the disciple whether Gurudev is still in this world or whether Gurudev has left this world but if the disciple is following Gurudev Gurudev is always with that disciple and blessing them now as we began our discourse today that it's very difficult to understand the Vaishnava so in the same way it's very difficult to understand Srila Prabhupada because he is Mahabhagavata Pradhan among all the Mahabhagas he is Mahabhagata Pradhan chief of the great Vaishnavas so who can understand him? it is not a simple thing in Sri Chaitanya Chakramata, there, Sri Krishna has spoken about why he comes to this world. Now we mix in Srila Prabhupada and Janmasmi first of all. Krishna's appearance and Prabhupada. I was just saying there in Berlin that in Vedic culture, when it's your birthday, you don't get gifts from everyone. You have to give gifts to others on your birthday. So because Sri Krishna appeared at midnight, he actually gives gifts to others and celebrates his birthday on the next day. That's Srila Prabhupada's appearance. So Krishna was thinking on his birthday, what can I give to the world? Said, oh yes, I'll give the best gift to the world and he gave us Srila Prabhupada. So this is why Srila Prabhupada appears on the day after Janmastha. Because he is Krishna's gift to the whole world. So, before Krishna appeared in this world, he was thinking to himself. Chirkal nahi kari prema bhakti daan bhakti bina jagatera nahi avasthan For a long time, I have not given praying to the world. Hmm? Many incarnations came. Varahade, Matcha, Kurma, Mashinga. They have given some love. But of Vaikuntha. That love which is predominating by, by, predominated by feelings of awe and reverence. Hmm? When you see God, then trembling, oh, my Lord. Huh? But that love is not so strong as the natural family like love that the bridge passes have for Krishna. So he's talking about that prayer. So Krishna says, Chir nahi kari prema bhakti daan. For a long time I did not give such love to the world. Bhakti bina jagatera nahi avastan. But without such praying, the whole universe is useless. Understand? Do you understand? Your life is useless without praying of praja. A life is useless. Prema dana bina biata daridra jivan dasakori vetan mari deho prema that Mahaprabhu himself is crying. Without the treasure of praying, my life is useless. I am a poverty-stricken beggar. So, Krishna, please accept me as your servant. Unpaid servant? No. I want a salary. What salary do you want? Just give me this praying. This is only salary I want. Not money, not position, not fame, 
Nadanam na janam na sundarin kaidam baja benishikami, on the janamini janamini street, bhavad and bhakti mahui to keep to me. Don't want anything of this world. Just let this love be awakened in my heart at every second. So Krishna said, the world is useless without this love. So if someone has said, will say, but many incarnations have come before. Krishna said, oh, yes. Sakale jagati more kari vidhi bhakti. Vidhi bhakti brajabhav paiti nahi shakti. The people of the world are worshipping me according to rules and regulations. But only following rules and regulations does not have the power to awaken the feelings of the Brajabhasis. Why? Aishwarya Gyaneti Sab Jagata Misrit Aishwarya Shitila Prema Nahimona Preet If a person loves me but knows, oh, you are Bhagavan, then this makes their love weak. Because God doesn't need anything. He doesn't need food. He doesn't need water. He doesn't need rest. He doesn't need massage. He doesn't need to be fanned when he's hot. Or heated when he's cold. He's transcendental. And his Akmaram Aptakam self-satisfied. Hmm? So how can, why will you serve such a God? He doesn't need you or your service. So, if a person thinks, oh Krishna, you are God, then they get the deity of Krishna, put him on the shelf. Once a day, give him a stick of incense and forget about it. But if you have a baby in your family, then every minute of the day, <laughs> feeding, bathing, talking, playing, <laughs> going here and there. Why? You are not thinking this baby is Atvaram, Atvaram. <laughs> You think this baby is helpless and cannot do anything for himself. Yeah? So you have to have that mood towards Krishna. That's the mood of Prajapasis. Then service is flowing for all the time. So that is called Lokik Sadbandu Bhatsambanda. A relationship with Sambanda which is Lokik, like of this world. Sadbandu, of a dear bosom friend or relative. What means like? You learn this. Loki, say That means of this world. Sadhavandu. A bosom friend or relative. Sadhavandu. But means like. Like just like that. Sambanda relationship. Hmm? So say it. Loki, Sadhavandu, but Sambanda. Say Loki, Sadhavandu, but Sambanda. Huh? That is the nature of praying. Rupa Gos sorry, Sri Lasanatma Goswami has said, Atyanta Pragara Mamata Yukta Lokik Sadbandu Bhat Sambanda. Atyanta means excessively. Pragara means condensed. Mamata means possessiveness. So when there is a Lokik Sadbandu Bhat Sambanda, a relationship with Krishna, like the relationship you have with a bosom friend or family member in this world, which is Adhyanta Prakara Mamata Yukta, infused with excessively condensed feelings of possessiveness, Krishna, your mind. That is the Srut of brain love. Understand? So if a person thinks Krishna is God, then his love becomes weak. So Krishna said, Aishwarya Janati Sa, Jogatan on the street, Aishwarya Shitila Prem Nahimura Preet. That love which is weakened by knowledge of my Godhood is the. It pleases me somewhat, but it cannot control me. It cannot control me. But what kind of love can control me? The love of Matiya Shunda. Matiya Shunda. Oh, can I come? Eat some butter. Very delicious. Hmm? But Krishna love, any food? No, no, take some, you're looking very thin. And then Madhya Shoda takes the Sikha of Balaram. 
and holding up the secret Balaam says, look, Balaam's Jyoti is so fat. But your Jyoti is very lean and thin. Because it's on the back of his head, baby Krishna cannot see it. <laughs> but anyway, he believes his mother. Then he thinks, oh, yeah, what a Jyoti like about that? Okay, give me more. <laughs> so in this way, Madhya showed being worried that Krishna is not eating enough. By tricks, he tricks him into eating some. Mother knows that's very intelligent how to bring about the best for a child. So Krishna, this love controls me. My coward boys, they wrestle with me. They climb on my shoulders. They say, hey Kanaya, what kind of big man are you? You are not more than me. Your father has 900,000 cows. My father has 11,000 cows. So you are not bigger than me. <laughs> like friends, equals. And Priya Yari Man Kare Kare Batsan Veda Stuti Hoiti Hari Se Morman And when the demigods Brahma and Shiva and others are offering prayers, mantras of the Vedas to me, then I listen. But if my gopis criticize me and say, Hey, Lampa Chudamani, you are the crushed jewel of debauches. You are Paris Street Store, you are the thief of the wives of other men. And they criticize me in this way. Then their sweet abuse steals my mind away from the mantras of the Vedas. So this is the love that Krishna wants to taste. Hmm? Understand, what is Bhakti? Bhakti is Anapuli in a Krishna Nushilana. Bhakti is not doing, not serving Krishna the way you want to serve him. Bhakti is serving Krishna the way Krishna wants to be served by you. Understand? Huh? So one thing, I want to serve Krishna by opening a temple on the beach in Hawaii. <laughs> Because it's important to preach to the surface. But to preach to the surface, you have to go surfing yourself every day. It's an austerity, but someone has to do it. <laughs> Anyone can invent their own method, how they want to serve Krishna. <laughs> but how does Krishna want to be served? This we can only learn from Gurudev. Gurudev tells us, this is what Krishna wants. And gradually we follow outwardly and the mood will come inwardly. How to serve Krishna according to his to spiritual desires. So that is Anukulyena Krishna Shinam Bhakti Uttama. That is the bhakti which is Uttama, beyond the darkness of this material world. Not the bhakti which is the tamasic swarps the bhakti, rajasic swarps the bhakti, or sattvic swarps the bhakti. Not bhakti mixed with the gunas, but uttam bhakti uttama. So, Krishna said, I will appear in this world. For what? Premaras and Yurjas, Karite Ashwadan, Raga Marga Bhakti Loke, Karite Pracharan. Rasikara Shika Krishna Paramakarun, E Dui E Tu Hoite Lila Udgam. Krishna has two important, very important qualities. One is Rasika Shekhar. He is the connoisseur of all the flavors of Rasa. And the other, Paramakarun. He is supremely merciful. So due to these two qualities, he appears in the world, Prema Rasa Nirjas Kuriteyaswana, to taste the essence of Prema Rasa. And also, incidentally, he will to initiate the flow of Raganuga Bhakti in this world. Because when he does his Leela here, then all the wishes and sages start speaking about the Vrindavan Leela Kata. Shunya Nimalarak Shuni Bhakti Gan. And when the people hear about Krishna's Vrindavan Leela, then Vajile Prajabhav Chari Dharmakaya. They start to do bhajan in the Ragama, Raganuga Bhakti, and they give up the Dharma and Karma, worldly duties. Huh? So, this is why Krishna appears. Now, when Krishna appears, we know in Bhagavad Gita, he has said, Yada, Yada, Hi Dharmasya, 
Whenever the dharma is going down, religion is going down, and irreligion is on the rise, then tatatmanam sujamyaham. Sujami means I send forth. Tatatmanam, my tad ikatma rup, my expansion. That means Krishna actually doesn't do this business. Krishna's expansion, Tadekatma Rup, that is the Swamsa expansion. Tadekatma Rup has two parts, Vilas Rup and Swamsa Rup. And among Swamsa Rup, there is the uh, Vishnu. So, he sends forward Vishnu. Vishnu is the one who maintains Dharma in the world. Hmm? But when Krishna comes to this world, then. Vishnu enters into it. On Janmashtam we were discussing, Krishna doesn't come to this world from Goloka Vrindavan. Don't think so. Does Krishna come here from Goloka Vrindavan? No. Because in Srimad Bhagavatam he said, Mathura Bhagavan Yatra Nityam Sani Hitoma Hari Krishna lives eternally in Brajamanda. He's always in Brajamanda. He's always in Vrindavan. But he's apricot. When it's time for Krishna to appear, that Krishna who was already there in Vrindavan becomes prakat. And it's all the avatars who come here and enter into his body. He doesn't come here, he's already here. He's always here. For those who have the eyes to see. So they are the avatars, he's not the avatar. His avatar is... He's not coming down. He's already here. So he manifests, then... Paravresho Mahadansa Yukto Ajo Pijato Bhagavan Yatagani testing. Polish it. Very important for us. So, although he is unborn, but Krishna appears, Prakat has the leela of being born from the womb of Madhya Shoda in Goku. And all the avatars enter into him. So, Srila Krishna Skaros Goswami Pad, he says, Ataiva Vishnu Takan Krishna Sharire Vishnu Dware Kare Krishna Asura Sanhari. When Krishna appears in this world, Vishnu enters into him, and it's Vishnu. Through Vishnu, Krishna kills the demons. Paritanaya Sadanam Vinashayatu Jusputam Dharma Stam Sam Stapana Vesan Bhavami Yuga Yuga. He kills the demons and he. Establishes Dharma. Okay, so it's clear. Now, after Krishna completed his Leela in this world, he was thinking, hmm? I have to go again. <laughs> Why? Because I came to the world, I told everyone, Sarvadamam Prachadya Mame Kam Sharanadra Prajan. Abandon all varieties of religion and surrender to me. But I never practiced it myself. Apanina Kaila Dharma Sikanana Yai Eta Siddhanta Gita Bhagavata Gai. It is the conclusion of Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam that if you speak an instruction but you don't practice it yourself, it will have no power. <laughs> so Krishna told everyone, surrender to Krishna. But he has not surrendered to Krishna. So who will follow him? <laughs> so Krishna said, Apani karimo bhakta bhava yangi kai, apani achari bhakti shikamu sabari. I will come into the world in the mood of a devotee and I will show everyone how to surrender to Krishna and practice devotional service by my own example. So, Yuga Dharma Pravatai Nama Sankirtan Chari Bhava Bhakti Diya Nachamu Puvan. I will spread the Yuga Dharma. The Kali Yuga Dharma of Nam Sankirtan. Oh, loudly singing, everyone dancing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Chari Bhava Bhakti Diya Nachamu Bhavan. And I will make the whole world dance, realizing Chari Bhava, full moods, Dasa Sakya Vatsoy and Madhurya. 
So, in this way, Krishna came again in the form of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and established the Yuga Dharma, Harinam Sankirtan. Now, once it was the um, disappearance there of Srila Prabhupada, but his Samadhi in Paranda, back in the good old days, when Krishna Balaram Mandir used to invite my Gurudev to come and speak on that day. Because who puts Srila Prabhupada in Samadhi? Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayanaj met Srila Prabhupada in 1946. And his guru told him, oh, this is Bhaktivedanta Abhay Chandaravinda Prabhu. Serve him, he is very qualified. So Srila Narayanaj was Srila Prabhupada's first servant. And in the end, when he left this world, Srila Prabhupada said, I want you to give me the Mahasamadhi. So when Srila Prabhupada went into Mahasamadhi, then my Gurudev ground the Chandan and had to write the Gopi Bhava Mantra on the chest of Srila Prabhupada. And also give Sindur. Gopis were Sindur, but Sindur also on the body of Srila Prabhupada. This is the sannyas, the rituals for the, the samadhi of a sannyas. My Gurudev did all this and put Srila Prabhupada in samadhi. So he was his first servant and also he rendered the last service also. Beginning to end. And sent the first deities of Rupa Goswami Zaranda Govinda to the West as well. Yeah. It was like an exchange. Srila Prabhupada said, you have Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Gurudev said, okay, you take my <laughs> So, on the disappearance festival, my Gurudev was there and he said, Look, you have glorified Srila Prabhupada. But coming back to our subject, this whole class is only one subject. The Vaishnavas are very difficult to understand. Even the Devatas cannot understand them. They are very confidential personalities. So, Gurudev said, you have glorified Srila Prabhupada for what he has done. That he has opened temples all over the world, established deities all over the world, distributed books all over the world, spread the Sankirtan all over the world, everywhere. But, by saying these things, though they are glorious, you have still actually not touched his real glory. Why? Though Chaitanya Krishna said before appearing as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Yuga Dharma Pravatanu Nama Sankirtan, I will come and establish Nama Sankirtan. But just as when Krishna comes to this world and kills the demons, Krishna doesn't kill the demons. It's Vishnu inside Krishna who kills the demons and establishes Dharma. So simply, it is not Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's intention or business to establish the Yuga Dharma of Nam Sankirtan. Do you understand? Do you agree? If you disagree, you can raise your hand. In Chaitanya Tanvita, he said, Eimata Chaitanya Krishna Purna Bhagavan Yuga Dharma Pravatana Nahi Tarakam We translate it word for word. Eimata after describing that when Krishna comes, it's Vishnu who kills the demons. But Krishna comes to taste rasa. And Vishnu establishes Dharma. So a mata means in the same way. A mata. Chaitanya. Krishna Purana Bhagavan. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is also Krishna. And Yuga Dharma Pravatana. To establish the Yuga Dharma of Nam Sankirtan. Nahi Karakam is not his kam, his desire, his intention. That's not why he comes. Why does he come? Same as Krishna. A mata, same as Krishna. Prema rasa nirjas kurite ashwadan, raga marga bhakti loke kurite pracharan. 
Mahaprabhu comes to taste the essence of rasa. But in Krishna Leela, Krishna is tasting what it's like to be loved by Radharani. And in Gaur Leela, Krishna is tasting what it's like to be Radharani loving himself. This is the difference. In Krishna Leela, Krishna is the Vishai of praying, the object of praying of Radharani. And in Gauralila, then Krishna is the Ashrai, the abode of the Prem of Radharani for Krishna. So Gauralila and Krishna Lila, they're not two different Leelas. Gauralila is the Parishishna Lila, that means the appendix of Krishna Lila. If you have a book, you read the book, when you get to the end of the book, the book is over, but there's a few more pages. <laughs> That's the appendix. So the appendix of the book, that is called Parishishta. It has, there's something in it which is not in the rest of the book. But something is there which will shed a new light on the whole book. So in the same way, Gora Lila is not another Lila. It's Krishna Lila. But there's something in Gora Lila which is not in Krishna Lila. That is Krishna experiencing right around his past. And Gora Lila sheds new light on Krishna's Lila. So, just as Mahaprabhu has come to taste the essence of rasa, si radaya pranaya mahima kitrisho vahanayayiva, swadhyoi nand bhuta madurima kitrisham bhavadya, saukyam chasya madan bhavataha kitrisham vetilobya, tan bhavadya samajani sachigarabhau sindoha nindu. Mahaprabhu has appeared like the moon from the ocean. Impelled by an intense greed to know how deep is the brain of Radharani. What is the beauty in Krishna that only Radharani sees through the eyes of love? And what is the happiness that Radharani experiences when she tastes the sweetness of Krishna through the power of her brain? Be impelled by these three desires, Krishna. You see, these three desires were not fulfilled in Krishna Lila. He tried to fulfill them again and again, but he failed. So after Krishna Lila became unmanifest, he decided, I have to go again. So he came again, and this is why every time Krishna appears once in a day of Lord Brahma, in a day of Lord Brahma, there are a thousand cycles of Satya Treta Dwarpa Kali, Satya Treta Dwarpa Kali, Satya Treta Dwarpa Kali, Satya Treta Dwarpa Kali. A thousand times. Krishna only comes once. Asta Binsa Chapter Yuga Dwarpa Rera Shesh. Brajera Sahai Krishna Lila Pokashi. At the end of the 28th Dwarpa Yuga, and during the reign of the 7th Manu Vaisvata Manu, Krishna manifests along with all of his brother associates in this world. Huh? So Krishna only appears once in the day of Lord Brahma, and then Mahapu immediately appears in the next Kali Yuga. Uh, not in any of the other thousand Kali Yugas, in the very next one, because Krishna Gaur Lila is the continuation of Krishna Lila, wherein Krishna fulfills his unfulfilled desires, which were there, not fulfilled in the Nikunja zone, Prajan. So, this is why Krishna comes, and the, to relish the rasa of Radhika's play, this is why Gora comes. So, if you will glorify Srila Prabhupada, now we're coming back, Krishna Paraman did my good lady speech. said, if you glorify Srila Prabhupada, he has spread the Yuga Dharma everywhere, then you have not actually fully glorified Srila Prabhupada, but in many ways you have minimized him because you have turned him into the servant of Mahavishnu. Is the glory of Srila Prabhupada that he is the servant of Mahavishnu? So until a person has realized that the greatest glory of Srila Prabhupada is that he is a Radha Dasi, the maid servant of Srimati Radhika. Yeah. Then, if you only say, oh, he has spread the Yuga Dharma, then you have said that he is a servant of Mahavishnu, but you have not glorified him as the servant of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, mm -hmm. Sachinandan Gohari, is absorbed in Radha Bhav, and he has come to relish that, and instantly, that is one hand up. 
das verrückt ist. Mhm. And he's come to distribute, yeah. rather than yeah. the food of Rupa Magic. Mm-hmm. One hand down. Mm-hmm. So Srila Prabhupada is one dasi of Medica and he has come to assist Mahaprabhu uh, in his distribution of that. Mm-hmm. And eternally serving Radha and Krishna. Uh, if Krishna has uh, some Harada got lost on his way to meeting Radharani and ended up in the Kunj of Chandravati, then Radharani would be very upset. And then Srila Prabhupada is there as the Dasi of Radhika. And Radhika will say, Oh my dear Saki, go and stand on the gate of my Kunj and watch out for Krishna. And if he comes, don't let him in. And then Krishna will come there. And uh, that made so the Radhika will say, Stop, I'm sorry, you cannot come in today. You have made offense. And Krishna with tears in his eyes will have to pray and beg. Please. Shri Prabhupada Saswati Thakur is saying that the maidservants of Radhika are so great that when Radharani is upset, Krishna will have to take shelter of them. Though Krishna is Sarva Ashray, he is the shelter of all existence. But see, Krishna will have to take shelter of the Dasis of Radhika and beg them with tears in his eyes, please have mercy on me. Allow me to meet with your Swami. So yet King Kadishu Bhavsa Kalka Kamani Nityam Parasya Purusha Shashikandam Holi Tasya Kadara Siddhine Prashabhanu Jaya Srila Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur is saying, when can I become the, the broom that the Mandiris are using to sweep in that Kunja of Shnatamanika, then my life would be successful. Very humbly he's praying from far away. If I can have some existence even as a broom then with which they are sweeping the Kunja, because that is the plane of the highest, most confidential brain that was never ever distributed before in this day of Lord Brahma. No one had ever given such brain before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave it the last time he gave it in the previous day of Lord Brahma. Only Mahaprabhu was given it. So in this way we are remembering the appearance of Sri Krishna the significance of this appearance and the significance of the appearance of Nitya-lila, Prishtopada, Ishtota, rest of the sea, Abhai, Chanaravinda, Bhaktivedanta, Swami Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada ki, Jai Gaur Premanandi, Are there any questions? Do you have some questions? Yes, Prabhu. Yeah. I have uh, heard in the lotus feet of my Sri Chaguru, Sri Padayanda Sabhaji, that he expressed uh, the idea and the conception that <coughs> those external and internal reasons for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's appearance, that they are actually interdependent and he gave the explanation to it that, as it is explained in uh, Ramananda Samhat, in the chapter, that Srimati Radharani experiences so much multifold joy or bliss by arranging others to meet with Sri Krishna. So in that way, so that Sri Krishna can experience that part of Radharani's experience, he had to also uh, distribute uh, the, the, the Krishna to others the, the laws. So if you could kindly comment on that or shed some light on that. They are not, the external and internal are not exactly interdependent. The word used in Chaitanya Tarvit is anusangik. Anusangik. Anusangik means incidental. Now, 
when we speak of the ex internal and external desires of Mahabhu, the internal is divided into two parts and the external is also divided into two parts. So you have primary internal, secondary internal. And the primary external, secondary external. Now, internal and external doesn't mean spiritual and material. It means for himself, that is internal, and for others is external. Right? So the primary internal reason is Sri Radaya Pranayama. He wants to realize the glories of Radharani. The secondary internal is the call of Advaita Acharya. Because Supreme Lord is controlled by the love of his devotees. So when he will come to this world, oh, that is this Advaita Acharya's Pujra Vishalagram Shila. Tulasi Dalama Trena Jalasa Tulak Vrainava, the Kurditates Vatmana Bhaktivyo Bhaktavatsala. And he's loudly calling Krishna Krishna for Krishna to come. So because Krishna's heart is controlled by his devotees, Mahaprabhu is the manifest in this world due to the call of Advaita Acharya. That is the secondary internal reason. Now the external has primary and secondary. So the secondary external reason is to establish the Yuga Dharma. That is Anusangik. In other words, he doesn't really come to do that. A Mata Chaitanya Krishna Purna Bhagavan Yuga Dharma Pravatana Nahi Tarakam. This is not his desire when he comes to establish the Yuga Dharma. Vishnu inside can do that. So that is Anusangik. That is the external secondary reason. Now, this is what Pujapar, the very great Vaishnava Ahindra Prabhu is talking about. The primary external reason was to distribute Ragamark. And especially within Ragamark, Anarpita Charim Chirat Karunaya Vartir Nahakalo Sumarpaitum Unnat Ujjwara Sam Swabhakti Sriyam. I am very happy that you reminded me of Pujapad Ahindra Prabhu. I remember in uh, 1991, I was staying with him in Krishna Bharati. He was very ecstatic. He was so absorbed in Kirtan, always, the whole time. And gave very good classes also. He was even controversial. In his own temple he was controversial. Because he spoke in a very bold way and never compromised with the truth. And truly representing Srila Prabhupada's desire. So now, so, see, Parampujapada, see, Ayinder Prabhu is talking about this. Not the establishment of the Yuga Dharma, but the primary external reason, Ragamark, and within that, Anarapita, to, to give the prayer that was never given before, that is Raga Dasya. Let me just give one illustration of the meaning of Anusangik before we look at Raga Dasya. What does it mean that uh, establishing the Yuga Dharma is Anusangik for the Lord, whether it's Krishna or Mahaprabhu? Just like if you go to the kitchen and you want to cook, the reason you went to the kitchen was to cook. But let's say it was cold that day. And when you lit the fire to cook, the heat of the fire made the kitchen warm. So your purpose of going there was to cook, but incidentally the kitchen also became warm. This is the meaning, anosangik, incidentally. Now, Mahaprabhu's primary reason for coming, according to Swarup Damodar Goswami, is Sri Radaya Pranaya Mahima. 
to realize radical bhav and but the external reason it is mm, connected with that it is connected with that so they are interrelated but not exactly interdependent they interrelated because if they were interdependent then it would mean that the first one was also dependent on the second one the second one is dependent on the first one but it's very interrelated because krishna wants to experience radha bhav but another aspect is this krishna das karwaj goswami said in bhagavad gita krishna has said yayatamam pratadyante tangstataiva bhajanya i reciprocate with everyone but the gopis have broken my promise i can't reciprocate with them why because their love is one pointed to me and my love is many pointed going everywhere and i cannot give it up i love madhi ashoda i love nanda maharaj i love the cow boys i love the cows i love all my devotees i cannot give up a single devotee anywhere even devotees in the material world who are worshiping me i cannot give them up even a devotee in the material world who is falling down i can't give him up apichat sudara charo bajate ma mananya bak sadur eva samantavya samyak gava ito isa I cannot give up even the fallen devotees. But the gopi's prayer is one point, just to me. So how can I reciprocate? Ya ma bajan dunje ya geya sankala samrishya ya dva pratiyatu sadhana They have left everything. They broke the shackles of household life. For me, but I have not left anything for them. So what can I do? I cannot repay. Na pariya, I cannot repay you. But here, the last line said, "Pratiyatu sadhana" means, "Oh Gopis, please be satisfied with your own glorious qualities, with your own sadhuta, your own saintly qualities." Because what is the reward for the loving service to Krishna? You don't need the reward for loving service to Krishna because having that love is itself the reward. There's nothing more joyful for me than that. So Krishna said, "May you be satisfied. May you be recom- uh, your compensation. May that be the joy that you feel in your service." That's all. Pratiyatu sadhana. But this has another confidential meaning. Pratiyatu sadhana. I will repay you when I become a sadhu. So when Krishna becomes a sadhu, then he tries to reciprocate with Radhika. As Radhika cried an ocean of tears uh, in separation of Krishna when Krishna left Vrindavan, so now Krishna will cry an ocean of tears, realizing the glory of Radharani's love. And as Krishna thinks, I cannot be one pointed to you. But I'll collect many, many jivas, and they will all serve you one pointed. So alone I cannot reciprocate. But if I collect many jivas, and they'll be one pointed, that is Radha Dasya, the mood of Rupa Manjari. They'll all be focused on you. They won't even be focused on me. Yeah? Krishna gives love to everyone. Oh, love me, love me, love me. Hmm? But in Manjari Bhav, it is yes, you'll love me, but you'll love Radharani more. One pointed love to Radharani and love to Krishna will be included in that. That is called Bhava Masarati. So, in this way, there is a connection, a relationship between the distribution of Unnata Ujwala Rasam Swabhakti Sriyam and uh, Krishna's relationship with Radharani. And only when Krishna realizes Radhika's bhav is it possible for him to distribute that Unnata Ujwala Rasam, that Radha Das, and he does it through her complexion. That's why Bhagavad Swami said, "Sabar pai tum unnat ujwara sam swabhakti sam hari pura to sundar duti kadam basandi bita." Ma Prabhu is hari, but he is effulgent with the complexion of molten gold. 
Sadhari Dekandari Spratuva Satyanandana. May that golden form of Mapu appear in your heart. If you have the darshan of his golden complexion, you will automatically attain Radhadasya. So, when Krishna assumes the bath and the complexion of Radhika, then the distribution of Radhadasya is the natural uh, consequence of his complexion. Because it is Goranga Swarup which causes the awakening of Radhadasya in the heart of the Jeevas. Why? That's a very deep topic. We'll explain it tomorrow. Okay? That will be the subject tomorrow. Why? Uh, the Goranga Sarup distributes the Undata Ujwala Rasa rather does it. Okay. Understand? So, I don't know if I can say understand. <laughs> uh, internal and external, but internal primary, internal secondary. External, external primary, external secondary. External secondary is Anusangik. It is just incidental, Vishnu in him is establishing the Yoga Dharma. But those persons who undergo Chaito, Dharpana, Marjana, their hearts are cleansed by the Yuga Dharma, then they'll move from Vaidhi into Ragamark. Now they become connected with the external primary. That is Ragamark. And if they'll be under the guidance of Rupanuga Vaishnavas, actual Rajrasik Rupanuga Vaishnavas, then within that Ragamark they'll come into the special gift of Mahabhu, Unnata Ujjwala Rasam Swabhakti So that is very much connected with Krishna's attempt to reciprocate with Radharani. So that aspect goes both ways, I understand. Sila Prabhupada ki jai Satchidandan Gauri ki jai Dai Gaur Premanande ki jai